Average Engineers. Today I just wanted to do a quick overview of data modeling. I think it can be a complicated topic. A lot of people make it more complicated than it needs to be. Um, it can be a little overwhelming if you're getting into data engineering, starting to do SQL. You've got OLTP systems, you've got OLAP systems, you've got third normal form. People go crazy. Honestly, that's great. I spent a lot of time really in my career learning how to do data modeling very well. And depending on the situation you're in, it can be very beneficial to learn a lot of very specific data modeling things and topics. But honestly, what I teach my younger engineers, junior engineers, is that it's really simple. There's a few things that if you get right with data modeling, you will be fine. And basically what that boils down to is, number one, you have to know the access patterns of the data. That's the big thing. What do I mean by access patterns? I mean how is your data being queried, right? If you need to understand that, what kind of things are in the where clause? What do the queries look like? How can you model data if you don't know how people will be accessing the data? That's a big deal. So understand your data access patterns, meaning go look at the queries that are written again or going to be written against that data, understand them, and that'll give you an idea of how to data model. The next easy topic without diving too deep into it is I would recommend you go read the data warehouse toolkit. It's pretty much way old, but it still applies to data warehousing, to data lakes. It doesn't matter if you're on Delta Lake or SQL Server, this applies. A big thing about data modeling is just understanding facts versus dimensions. Even if you don't want to call them that, there's two types of data that you will run into. There is data that accumulates as a fact. And what do I mean by that? I mean, like, say you swipe your credit card and go buy something at a gas station or at Target. That is a fact. It's a transaction. You know, another example would be clicking something on a website. You go to Facebook, you go to Reddit, you click on a page, you click on a comment, you click on a picture. That's a fact. It's a generation. Usually facts grow very fast. There's lots of them. And they really don't change after the fact. That's the thing about a fact is facts don't change usually. So you can think about data like that, facts, things that don't change, things that I do and that are always there. I buy a product, I go swipe my credit card, I click on something, that's a fact. And then there's other data called dimension, dimensional data. And that's like descriptor data. That's like your name, who you are, right? Somebody went and bought this thing at the gas station, it's you. Well, maybe you have customer data about that customer, your first name, your last name, address, things that change slowly over time, typically, or stay the same. Maybe the product information, descriptors about product, right? That's not a fact. It doesn't grow over time. It's subject to change, and it kind of relates to the fact. Does that make sense? Fact, growing over time, you got to dimension something about that customer, that product, right? That kind of like doesn't grow as much, but it's related to that data. Um, that's a really obvious thing I think people miss about data modeling is just trying to get that concept of what type of data am I looking at? You know, if I'm working on a problem, is this something that is more like a fact and that grows quickly over time and it never changes? Or is this like something that describes something else? Is it customer information? Is it you know, product information, things like that. That's a very easy way to learn data modeling, just understanding those basic concepts. The last thing I would tell people about data modeling is just understanding primary keys. Even if you work in systems like data lakes and Parquet files that don't have classic primary keys, the concept of a primary key is very important when data modeling. And that basically means I know what makes my record unique in this table. What makes this record different from the next one? The answer to that question is called a primary key, usually. Obviously, there's nuances here, but that's a big thing about data modeling. Looking at a data table or something you're modeling or some data set you're trying to model, one of the first things you should do is just understand what makes the data in this table unique. What separates one record from another one, aka a primary key, something, a unique identifier, whether it's a single column or multiple columns together, often very overlooked till later. That should be one of the first things you do when your data model is understanding what does this data look like compared to something else. This record in this table, take a look at it. How does it differentiate the record next to it? Right? Think about it. And lastly, I think I would talk about something called the grain of the data, sort of important for data modeling. What do I mean by grain? I mean, what level of detail is this data at? especially in data engineering where there's a lot of analytics and rollups going on. It's always good when you're looking at a data set just to try to understand at what level is my data. 
Is it at a transactional level? Is it at a customer level? Is it rolled up? What trying to understand at what level is this data helps answer questions on down the line because someone might ask you something that is below your grain of data, meaning I don't know that because my data is kind of like more high level and doesn't give me that low level detail, or maybe it is low level and I need to roll it up to give you that detail. So that's another important concept. Again, I don't think data modeling needs to be that complicated, of course, as I've done in the past. If you're using relational database systems, say like Postgres or SQL Server, you have to get very good at data modeling because those systems really, really depend on good data models, indexes, primary keys, third normal form and tables, things like that to help join these tables to make queries fast. Yes, you got to spend a lot of time learning that stuff. I would say the landscape has changed when we could talk about things like Iceberg and Delta Lake, these massive parquet file systems that are sitting out in cloud stores are a little bit more forgiving. There's no things such as primary key or foreign keys yet in those systems. And they're just file based systems. You think about partitioning and clustering there. Um, Maybe I'll do a talk on that later. But again, these concepts apply across the board. Try to understand your data, what level you're storing it at. Try to understand the data set. Is this kind of like a fact data set that's growing quickly that doesn't change? Or is this kind of like a descriptor or dimension table that doesn't change that much over time? What makes these records unique? How are they different from other ones? Those type of things, keeping them in your mind will get you 80% of the way in data modeling.